All right, let's talk about episode number 10 of The Walking Dead. This video is going to be a little late along with my other reviews for probably a couple more weeks with my work schedule. So if you're like, wow, this is super late, I totally get you. It cannot be avoided for at least a few more weeks where I can start getting it out earlier. So I apologize in advance. This episode was definitely a lot more lighthearted than the mid-season premiere, and I think for some of us we needed a little bit more goofier, lighthearted episode to kind of, I don't know, calm us down just for a little bit before plunging us back into the roller coaster ride that is The Walking Dead. Especially to get character progression, and the two-month jump skip I think was alright. I would have liked to see them rebuilding and dealing with the aftermath of dealing with the Horde, but I understand a two-month time skip works a little bit better for the more impatient Walking Dead fans that don't want to deal with the emotional aftermath of that and they just want to see, okay, how'd they deal with it two months from now? Oh, great. Look, they expanded the walls of Alexandria. They are falling into their own routines. Carl is healing. All right, let's go. So I feel like they kind of tried to find a middle ground where they gave us a, again, more of a lighthearted episode where we got character progression, but at the same time we skipped through, you know, the two months of character progression we could have seen with them dealing with the aftermath to kind of appease maybe the fans that don't like seeing that stuff as much. And the normal conversations. I absolutely love that we had more normal conversations, or at least normal for a TV show. The Walking Dead has had a lot of good monologues. Overall, they've had some really great monologues, but they've also had some really bad ones, and they've had some really bad dialogue between characters and really bad speeches, and the ones that come to mind from this season only would be Sasha and Abraham when they were waiting for Daryl. That dialogue was just so ham-fisted. It was so bad bad. And from asking you guys, apparently you, a lot of you agreed with me, which made me feel better. Like I just wasn't clicking with whatever they were saying. And then the other one, the big one I can think of was Jesse's speech to the other Alexandrians about how this is the way things are. And it just was like another ham-fisted speech. So this episode actually felt like the dialogue was more natural and more what you would actually think people would say to each other in the zombie apocalypse for TV version, not real life, obviously. TV. TV is different than real life. Carl and Enid's interactions, I think we're all right. We got to see how Carl is doing after losing his eye and how he's adjusting to this new world. And I actually really liked that Carl saw Michonne and Spencer walking through the woods and then saw a walker and he realized that he couldn't just leave that walker go. And I feel like that's a lesson all of Rick and Co. should know by now. You let a walker go and oopsies, it comes back and bites one of your friends. So I was really glad to see that. And two, I was really glad to see Carl, kind of a, a throwback to Lori, where he said Spencer needs to be the one to, to kill Deanna. He, he, she should have been killed by someone that loved her. And I, I feel like they were trying to channel what he went through with his own mom having to kill Lori when she ended up turning. And to me, those little callbacks to previous episodes and showing us that this is one whole cohesive story where characters are affected from their past and what happened to them is just so greatly appreciated. And I really, I tip my hat, but not my fedora to the writer. And I'm glad that Spencer got closure, and I didn't get to watch the story sync uh, this episode, so if anybody knows how Deanna got out, that would be greatly appreciated. The only thing I can think of is during her last charge scream at the walkers, she was already so turned that they didn't bother feasting on her and tearing her apart because she didn't seem to have any other extra wounds on her body that would indicate that those, those walkers tore her apart. So I I, she shot at them, she was so far turned that they just let her go and maybe she ended up getting out into the forest? Or maybe she shot at them and then shut the door and then got out the window and got to the forest? It just seems a little weird that for two months she was wandering around, because if she got turned into a walker, she would have been drawn by the noise and the fire and all that, but she wasn't. She instead ended up getting outside the walls, and I kind of really want to know how that happened, but I guess I'm okay if I never know. I think Jesus was handled very well. Of course, he was introduced differently than what we saw in the comics, but I actually really appreciated that his outfit was almost identical to the comics, and that made me smile. 
a lot. Best moments by far were when Jesse asked if Daryl and Rick even had ammo and they both fired at the walker, and then when Jesus takes Daryl's gun and he gets it back and tells him, that's my gun. And I think in general we really needed to see the bromance again between Daryl and Rick because those two work so well together and they have such an amazing chemistry. And I think in an interview they said that they actually watched a movie together before filming this episode. And you can just tell that they're friends in real life, how they interact. And I could have sworn at one point that Rick was going to eat out of the hand of Daryl and I would not have been disappointed about that one bit. Rick swerving enough to make Jesus' head keep falling on Daryl's shoulder was also priceless. Although I have a theory that he was awake the whole time. That was a long time for him to be out. I think he was listening to see what they were like. I will say a major gripe for me, and maybe not for other people, was the food truck thing. You have a score. You just found so much food and supplies. Go home. Don't explore. Don't take a new way back. Don't see what you can see. You were given a gift. Take that fucking truck and take it right back to Alexandria. That killed me. When they're like, oh, let's do a little more exploring with this fucking payload and make sure we leave our fucking doors open when we go out to look at other shit. No, that is not how you behave in the zombie apocalypse. And that is in hindsight, that's common sense. Also, why were they going to leave that car there? there? There was no reason to leave that car there. If they would have just given us a throwaway line about why they needed to leave the car there, fine, I would have accepted it. But both of you getting into the truck and leaving that perfectly fine car there? Bullshit. You don't do that. So that also kind of kind of poked at me a little bit. And then, then the whole ending with the truck going into the water, it just felt like one of those really, I think they said it on The Talking Dead, like Benny Hill moment. And it was like, come on guys, why are you doing, why are you swerving and driving at this person? I get you're like all angry and all raged up, but you have supplies. Fuck that guy. Get back to Alexandria. That's all I'm saying. I'm just a little agitated, but I also don't like when things like this happen in movies, so I'm a little biased. And then I guess lastly, talking about Michonne and Rick, I don't really have a lot of opinions on them being together. I feel like a lot of people saw this coming, especially over the seasons as we saw them getting closer and closer and just seeing how much Michonne was family to both Rick and Carl. And of course, we build up to this moment with Carl and Michonne talking and Carl saying that he would have done what he did for Deanna and Spencer for Michonne. And I don't know, it just, they were building up to that all moment. And then when they kissed and ended up sleeping together, I think just a lot of us saw it coming. And comic readers, a lot of comic readers are probably really happy about this and a lot of show watchers as well. I, again, I didn't really ship them. I thought they would be cute together. I think they would have worked well together. And I realized that they're replacing a certain relationship in the comics that now won't happen. So I understand why this happened. And I think, Michonne's actress talked about how people have been bugging her and Rick and the directors for a long time about the showrunners, excuse me, for a long time about doing this. So it, it kind of was expected that it would happen. And I did enjoy how in another interview they talked about originally they wanted them to grab a blanket and cover up before they got out of bed and got the sword and the gun when Jesus came in. And both Michonne and Rick's actor and actress were like, no. This isn't their character. If someone came in and intruded on them, they would have no modesty. They wouldn't care that they're naked. They would just instantly get up and be ready for combat. And they actually had to fight for that to happen. And so that's why we got a little bit of, a little bit of butt cheek at the ending of that episode was because they fought for that to happen. And I think it's great when the actors know their characters better and are willing to push their characters to do things that they would actually feel they would do than what the director is willing to do. So to me, bravo to them. So that's all I have to say. I feel like I don't have a lot to say about this episode. How do you feel about Rick and Michonne? Did you like Rick and Daryl's bonding time? How do you like Jesus? Do you think he is a bad guy or a good guy? If you are a comic reader, you cannot answer that because that's being a cheater. Besides that, make sure you like this video. It helps out the channel a lot. Make sure you come back every week for late Walking Dead reviews for a few more weeks. And besides that, we have comic videos, Game of Thrones videos, Star Wars videos, and anything sci-fi fantasy related.